Glenn Van Zutphen on Saturday mornings with Neil Humphreys, only on Money FM 89.3. International News Review. Good morning and welcome back to the show. Glenn and Neil with you up until noon today. Let's bring on Steve Oaken for our International News Review. Steve, good morning. Lots to talk about today. I cannot keep track of everything that's happening, guys. It is just a <laughs> historical week. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, so let's get right into it. Political, latest political situation as far as what we know in Ukraine. We've just been seeing on the Hill online that the Kremlin says Russia is agreeing to talks with Ukraine. Uh, we haven't seen confirmation from other sources on this yet. Um, have you seen anything or, or what, what's your take on it? No, I mean, like the starting point is one, Putin is a liar. Two, Putin cannot be trusted. Three, Putin invaded a sovereign country. Um, and yet, hate to make comparisons uh, of anybody to, to Hitler, but certainly, you know, the, he used the same ruse uh, that Hitler used to, to take over, you know, parts of and then eventually Czechoslovakia before he invaded Poland. Putin's doing the same thing. So don't believe anything that you, you read about Putin uh, until you actually see actions and you see him pulling his troops out of Ukraine. Well, let's talk about that, Steve. And uh, it's great to see you looking better, by the way. So I'm glad that you're mm. recovering. So great news there. Let's talk about that. Because the phrase I keep hearing in the last few days, Steve, is priced in. Putin has already priced in these sanctions. He anticipated these sanctions. As we're talking now, personal sanctions are coming in from the US on Australia on Putin himself. But I keep hearing this phrase, priced in he would have anticipated this sanction that sanction he's got a relationship with china to cover certain things in other words how bothered is he at this point how hard are these sanctions going to hurt we've all heard the stories that apparently he's been bunkered away for months on end reading old histories about old russia mother russia and taking back the natural what he sees as the natural boundaries of greater russia what impact really if any are these sanctions going to have on Putin himself? Well, I mean, sanctions as a rule in and of themselves don't work. I mean, they are one tool that you have, and you have to see where does the rest of the world come in? What other actions uh, do, do we take, you know, multilaterally? You're seeing, you know, unprecedented coming together. You've got not only the U.S. and the E.U., but you've got Japan coming in you've got which which historically does not want to, to oppose russia because they've got their own issues to deal with russia you know dating no. back to 1945 you've got japan no. coming in you've certainly got australia and new zealand coming in in the indo-pacific you've got countries that are now in a very difficult place especially china and india so sanctions is just one piece of it, it it's an important piece of it um but we can't just focus on sanctions as to what's going to happen to the outcome the other thing is What's going to happen in Ukraine? Um, you know, you, the numbers you read are about 150 Ukrainians have been murdered, but 450 Russian soldiers have been killed. Are you going to get protests in Russia against Putin? So there's just, it's so dynamic. It's, it's hard. To, you can't pinpoint one thing. And well, just it, to update, sorry yeah. to interrupt, there are artillery blasts happening now mm. in the city center itself. That is just breaking on the Guardian news. There are artillery blasts happening in the city center of Kiev right now. And the, the, the Ukrainian president uh, Zelensky had, had warned earlier today that, that there would be an attack overnight, uh, which mm. is right now uh, mm. in, in uh, Kiev. Uh, so it, perhaps that is a uh, part of what's happening there. Uh, we did see, or we have seen, Steve, uh, um, quite a number of, of loud protests in Russia itself. Uh, thousands of people uh, have been protesting yep. there, um, as well as many other European cities and even outside the White House in the U.S. Um, the, uh, you know, when we look back to, let's say, the Gulf War One, and uh, George Bush Sr., uh, you know, was able to sort of build a coalition of people that were, you know, against what Saddam Hussein was doing at that time. Are we seeing the same kind of coalescing of governments? Uh, is there a leadership that's happening, whether it's in the EU or European Commission? Is, are we seeing that right now yet uh, in terms of a, a group coming together? Well, you're seeing that. I mean, I think, Glenn, in what you said at the beginning with the interesting questions, what's going to happen in Russia? I mean, this is, you know, the Russians and Ukrainians are basically the same people. I mean, they share the same culture. They share the same 
history. They share, um, you know, the same lineage. And so you've got, you know, many intermarriages between Russians and Ukrainians. I think like, you know, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, the former leader of the Soviet Union, his, I think his mother was Ukrainian, his father was Russian or vice versa. I mean, so it's a totally different scenario. You know, Putin mm. is clearly in that in that bunker. And are you going to see the protests, especially when the Russian forces get tied down? So far, the Ukrainians have put up a much greater resistance. Hopefully yeah. that will continue. And then hopefully you will see that it becomes in Russia's interest to pull out because maybe some reality will, will break through to, to Putin in that bunker. Steve, we're going to um, leave that topic there for now because we've got a couple of others we want to get to. Uh, but suffice to say, <laughs> we're not done with this by a long shot. Um, and I know that you're going to be um, you're going to be in the media quite a bit this coming week. So people can keep an eye on you on social media and, and traditional media uh, to hear your analysis of, of what's going on. Uh, um, but he saves yeah. his best analysis for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. he was the he was you know one of the the original yeah. guests. Yeah, we should on lose sight of the fact he, we had him so, first. We, yeah, he was, we had him first. He's our guy, man. Yeah. He is our guy. <laughs> anyway, okay. Thanks, Steve. Hey, uh, Supreme Court nominee. Finally, there is one. Uh, not totally unexpected in terms of who it was uh, that Joe Biden announced. Uh, tell us about her. Well, it, it, it Kentanji Brown Jackson. She's the she will be, and she will get confirmed. She will be the first black female justice in the history of the United States of America. Uh, she is the very first federal public defender, um, and which she did from 2005 uh, to 2007. And so she'll be the first former public defender on the Supreme Court. Not since Thurgood Marshall has there been a Supreme Court justice with any real experience as a defense lawyer. So it's really important to have somebody with that experience on the court. So this is a, a great pick by by Joe Biden. It is certainly something that you could see the Democrats all co coalescing behind. And hopefully you will have some Republican senators voting for her as well as they did when she was just confirmed um, to the D.C. Circuit, where which is the one step below the Supreme Court where she's a judge now. Hmm. And I'm reading now, Steve, she will be the first black woman to serve in the court's 233 year history if confirmed. We do need a positive, feel-good, aspirational story today. Heaven knows. I mean, put it into context for our listeners and viewers what this means literally and symbolically for the United States. Well, you know, it was, it was, I was talking to somebody t t totally unrelated, but I was talking to somebody, you know, we work, I work with in private equity, and they were saying, what is the importance of diversity and inclusion? And, and all of a sudden, there was a woman got named to a board of a company, and they were talking about COVID. And what do we do coming out of COVID, and what should our project products be, and the like? And, and the woman said, well, what are we going to do for our, our workers who's, you know, who are at home still, and their, their kids still have issues, and how are we going to take care of them? Those issues were never discussed at the board level before, even though they should have, mm. because it's critically important to the country. The same thing needs to happen at the Supreme Court. You need somebody who knows what it's like to be a criminal defense lawyer. You need somebody who knows what it's like to be a public defender. You need somebody who knows what it's like to have grown up where their parents went to segregated schools, because that is going to make for much more informed decisions. It's been far too long that the, the court has never had a, a black woman who will bring a perspective. A sub, a, I mean, someone this accomplished, a D.C. Circuit judge, she went to Harvard Law School, told, told, told she never had a chance to go there, but she went there and she excelled. So she is going to be a, a great pick for the country. I believe, Steve, that she was the clerk, uh, a clerk for Justice Breyer, who's retiring. Is that is that correct? Yes, and that that is that is often the case where the retiring Supreme Court. Well, to, OK, so to be a clerk at, at the Supreme Court, you have to be the best of the best um, mm -hmm. out of out of law school. And then the you students, get yeah. to, to the students and then there's probably about. 30, you know, give or take any Supreme Court clerks in, in any given year. And so a lot of them do become Supreme Court justices, because even at that age, you can see how talented and, 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 and special they are. And I've had mm. a few friends from law school who went on to be Supreme Court clerks, never Supreme Court justices. But uh, uh, yeah. but it really is takes a very talented individual. And so when you're going to a, a, a justice who's retiring, you will say, who you know, who did you work for? Uh, who worked for you? Who do you recommend? And that becomes right. part of the farm system for, for Supreme Court judges. Great stuff. And, and Steve, just briefly, uh, I read some analysis that she, while uh, being fairly liberal, will also is also 
also very much a consensus builder. Um, do we know anything about that side of her jurisprudence? Well, I mean, you see that as you can see what what people bring when they are on um, the court. And again, she's on an appellate court now, one step below the Supreme Court. And so when you have appellate court decisions, you want to see unanimous decisions or you you, you, you hate to see five, four decisions or whatever the, the, the bench would be two to one, depending on the mm. court, because it, those decisions, while they carry the same effect as a unanimous, unanimous decision legally, there's a different public perception there. And so you want somebody who recognizes, you know what, I'll give a little bit to get another vote, to take a vote from dissent uh, to, to affirming, um, to joining the majority, because it's going to make the decision better. And so you want people like this on both sides. And there are consensus builders who are conservatives. There's consensus, consensus builders who are more liberal. And it's great that those are the type of people who make it to the Supreme Court when they do. Yeah. Great, Steve. Well, from the positive to the surreal, this one is straight out of an espionage crime thriller. Tell us about the extraordinary leak of data from Credit Suisse. This is, we're in John Grisham, John Le Carre <laughs> territory now, Steve. Yeah, so, so Credit Suisse had, had 18,000 or more accounts collectively holding about $100 billion from people who were described as being uh, accused of torture, drug trafficking, money laundering, corruption, and other serious crimes. And any Google search, if you had put their names in, would have, would have brought all this up. But yet Credit Suisse's system said, yes, we'll happily uh, take and, and hold on to your money. And this ran from uh, until the 2010s. And, uh, well, you know, Credit Suisse's statement was that, you know, it rejected the allegations that it did anything wrong. And, and besides these matters, you know, are, are predominantly historical, which reminded me, you know, in, in, in the U.S. there was a congressman, Henry Hyde. He was, you know, very conservative, uh, very, you know, socially, socially conservative. And it came out when he was in his 70s, it came out that he had an affair. And he said, well, that was a youthful indiscretion. Well, he was 48 when that youthful indiscretion occurred. <laughs> So these historical matters happened last yeah. decade. We're not going back to World War II for all of these. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is new, uh, a new-ish. Uh, and, and, of course, you know, many of these, when these uh, types of cases come to light, uh, the organizations involved, the banks involved say, well, we did our, you know, we did our, our, our due diligence and we did the best we could. You know, we can't look into every transaction that every person has. Uh, but, you know, when, when certain people, especially heads of state, are depositing millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars into accounts, uh, you know, why don't the red flags go up? Why aren't, you know, why aren't people saying, wait a minute, let's look closely well, at this. Glenn, I've, I've got to take exception with something you just said. I'm okay. trying to, you know, apply for a mortgage in the U.S. right now. You know how hmm. difficult this is? <laughs> <laughs> how many papers I have to give? How many even, phone even calls? Even the and new chairman, the, the incoming chairman give. of the MCHAM? Come on, man. So don't tell me that <laughs> when the... Pakistani intelligence official is is putting millions and millions of dollars into a bank account. You can't ask a single question or two. Right. So no, this yeah. is it's yeah. ridiculous that they that they say well. This and just to clarify, Steve, you, just to clarify, your name did not come up in, the, in this Credit Suisse <laughs> list of uh, extremely wealthy, influential men. Your name was not on that list. We should clarify that for our listeners. Because Neil, I couldn't get an account. <laughs> 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 I, don't oh. really have. I think if the three of us combined put all our money together multiplied it by 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 a hundred we wouldn't we wouldn't qualify for what uh, maybe by a hundred thousand <laughs> yeah or more anyway all right let's uh let's leave that one there hey by the way uh rob salisbury was saying that uh First of all, he's glad that you're hearing, you know, you're sounding better, as are we. And he said that you're working in, you're working in Ernest Shackleton Polar Expedition beard look. So I don't know <laughs> if that has anything with you going on the run or something. Uh, are you trying to hide no, from this somebody? Is, this or? is my, my COVID. <laughs> I stopped shaving for about a week and a half look. But it'll, it'll come back on. And I have to I've say, got, well, you know, for, it's impressive. for you guys. Okay, for you guys, no shaving. Well, I got I got to do Channel News Asia for State of the Union. <laughs> then I'm shaving, right? They get. They whoa, get. whoa, whoa, whoa! No, 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 no. That's the comment of the day. So we're not worthy of a razor now. Is that where we are on the pecking order? That's what I, that's what I certainly just heard. Channel News I Asia remember. get a shave, we get the scruffy beard. <laughs> Neil, remember Glenn's Says mustache? Neil, who needs a shave? Remember Glenn, Remember Glenn's mustache, Neil? 
Steve, remember it. I'm still having yeah. therapy about it. I had to sit across from it. It's for November. November. Come on, says the guy across from me. I who just never shave. Could use a shave himself. This, the, the, the campaign was laudable. The moustache, less so. All right. <laughs> Very quickly, uh, Steve, I don't know if you heard uh, us talk last week about uh, Jet Live TV um, and, and, the, and Storm Eunice in the UK. And, and this gentleman was uh, doing a play-by-play on the plane's landing as a plane spotter. Yeah. And, Neil, I'll let you take it from well, there. Steve knows all about it because Steve said, you know, you should contact these guys because Steve yes. was following it as well. Yeah. Americans were following it just for those who didn't listen to it last week. Singaporeans were following it. When Storm Eunice was happening in real time, Big Jet Live TV, which they do every day, was recording planes landing on the perimeter of Heathrow Airport. They do this every day for aviation lovers around the world. Normally they get a few thousand hits. That particular day, they peaked at 300,000. They had more than most mainstream news channels, partly because of the wonderful guys. Uh, Jerry, Jerry's wonderful commentary. It was lots of, get her down, girl. Get her down, girl. (laughs) Bish, bash, bosh. Get her down. You beauty. And all this stuff. Easy, easy. Easy, easy. That's right. When the wings tipped, easy, easy. So we discussed it on the show. Glenn kindly cut it together as a YouTube piece. I put it up. And then I think Monday or Tuesday, I got a reply from Jerry and Jilly, the, the double act themselves, yeah. saying, we loved it. It was very funny. But just one point of uh, fact, we do have slightly more than a handful of viewers for our regular <laughs> shows. <laughs> for the, so, not just for the unit yeah, shows. So, I said they had a handful. So I was... Well, suitably chastised but yes <laughs> they enjoy well, it you know and, and, and i you know i suggested they come on you know i, I said look i'll give up my slot they're way way better than i am but they said no they wouldn't they wouldn't do you guys but they would do elliot on monday funny so funny you should well no hang on funny you should say that steve because <laughs> jerry is now a global superstar he's done everybody cnn bbc you name it and when i said to him jerry you're a star but if you come on the Glenn and Neil morning show, will you shave? He said, absolutely. <laughs> That's the kind of guy Jerry is. That's the kind of humble guy yeah. that Jerry yeah. is. Not like Shackleton over there. He's a good man. He's <laughs> a good man. All right, Steve, we do have to leave it there. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. We'll be following all these stories uh, through the next week and look forward to your comments uh, throughout the week and next weekend. Fish, bash, bosh. Fish, bash, bosh. <laughs> Easy. Have a great one. International News Review. 